Hello and welcome to a Game of Thrones mod for Crusader Kings 3. This is a super exciting mod to get into because this was one of the premier mods for Crusader Kings 2. It was one of the mods that everyone looked to, there were people who downloaded Crusader Kings 2 and only played this mod. It added a ton of new functionality, new mechanics on top of mechanics. It adds in a new war system, which is making its return in this mod as well. It added in a whole bunch of different ways to do role playing. It added in a bunch of new titles that you could give to different characters in order to differentiate your court. Some of which I would say is kind of rolled into the base Crusader Kings 3 now and into Royal Court. There's a whole bunch of cool stuff that Crusader Kings uh, 2 version of this mod did. Crusader Kings 3 version of the mod has come in and, well, immediately you can see that the first thing they've done is they have gone very hard into changing all of the character models into proper 3D models, which also extends to the map, which has 3D models of a lot of the major cities and a lot of the major landmarks, such as the wall is fully modeled, King's Landing is fully modeled, is very interesting to look at and you'll see it when we jump into game. But before we do that, we have to talk about the bookmarks. There are two bookmarks available. We have Robert's Rebellion and, spoilers I guess, we have After Robert's Rebellion. 284 is uh, After Robert's Rebellion and that basically is just a plain map with no scripting, right? By that I mean it's everybody is in their place, they have a title, but there's nothing that's pushing the action forward. Wow. 282, which is the one that we're going to start on, starts with a little bit more of what you might expect from the Crusader Kings 2 version of the mod, and it is very much um, scripted events at the start, just to set action in, uh, going. Now, I will say there it doesn't appear to be any bookmarks for later in the cycle, like later in the Game of Thrones, and more uh, specifically, what a lot of people will be wondering is the Game of Thrones books. There's nothing in here for any of that sort of stuff. Now, the reason for that, I think, is in the Steam description, in that there are a couple of mechanics that currently are not in. Uh, such as, there are uh, no dragons, no white walkers, and no magic currently. So, they're kind of fundamental to the later bookmarks, but for Robert's Rebellion, they don't really apply. There's nothing really going on with Robert's Rebellion where we're going to need those. So, makes perfect sense to start here. Now, we because we're playing Robert's Rebellion, should obviously start by playing Lord Robert Baratheon, and we're going to set the scene. The year of the false spring is past, and winter is coming, and along with it a spark that will ignite the Seven Kingdoms. Rhaegar Targaryen, heir to the Iron Throne, has kidnapped Lyanna Stark, daughter of the Warden of the North, and betrothed to Lord Paramount of the Stormlands. When her brother, Brandon Stark, rode south demanding redress for her abduction, the Mad King Ares II, Targaryen, denied him a fair hearing, brutally executing him alongside his father. But when the Mad King called for the heads of the young lords Eddard Stark and Robert Baratheon, Lord John Arryn of the Vale instead raised his banners in rebellion. As fighting spreads across Westeros like wildfire, it is up to you to decide the fate of the kingdom. But when you play the Game of Thrones, you either win or you die. Let's jump in. Robert's Rebellion My beloved Lyanna has been kidnapped by the vile Prince Rhaegar. After protesting to King Aerys, Rickard Stark was burned alive whilst his son Brandon looked on. Aerys II, the Mad King, has demanded that John Arryn, my guardian, turn me over to him. He refused. Now Eddard Stark of the North, John Arryn of the Vale, Hoster Tully of the Riverlands, and I, Robert Baratheon of the Stormlands, stand against the Mad King's tyranny. We may not yet know who should succeed the King, but one thing is certain, the reign of the dragon is over. We stand today outside the gates of the traitorous Gull Town, for Lyanna. So, immediately we have gained an army. But before we go and have a look at it, I want to first of all have a large zoomed out look at the map. And you can see here we've got all of Westeros. It is a massive map currently. And the plan is, as far as I'm aware, for this to all be filled in as well. Much like it is in the Crusader Kings uh, 2 version of the mod. Currently not though. Currently we're focused on Westeros. And as we zoom in, we can see that the 3D modeling has got 
pretty extreme in places like King's Landing. So instead of all of your provinces looking like this over here, where you've just got like, you know, random uh, bits of provinces all over the place, it just kind of looks a bit generic. What they've done for major like highlights is they basically made it all into one city. So you can see here, all these individual bits are actually the different bits of your holding. So it's all very cool. Yeah, it's very cool looking. But we're going to zoom out and we're going to fly up to where we currently are, which is up in Gulltown, which is also modeled, but this is the place we're going to have to attack. Now, the first thing you should know about the Robert Rebellion bookmark is, as far as I'm aware, there's quite a lot of events which it just expects to happen. And you kind of just have to go with the flow. I found the first event, uh, there are probably others, but the first event gets you most of the way there, and that's you take this army that it, gave you, it gives you, and you take Gulltown. At that point, the next part of the uh, like cycle will actually trigger, and then we can get into things properly. Uh, but before we do that, we're going to do some of the things that you would do in base crusader things, such as choose a marshal, uh, or choose a lifestyle focus, which we're going to choose marshal on to gain ourselves some extra stats. Um, we have to marry off our heir. We also have to choose a patron aspect. Now, this one is actually new for the mod, I believe. I don't think this is in base Crusader Kings, but it's very similar uh, to something that we've seen in Elder Kings 2, which is basically you choose a patron and the patron gives you some sort of bonus. Now, I've had a look at these, and I think the one that makes by far the most sense for us by a large margin, given that we're at war, is probably the warrior. Lose some diplomacy, but instead we gain prowess and we gain maximum battle roll, which seems pretty good. Yeah, so we're going to give up some piety for that. Now, if we have a look in here, you can see that there are some systems. I'm just going to scroll down here without going too much into anything. But you can see that there are some systems that have definitely changed. For instance, there are five tenants. We have a special doctrine, which basically says that the Val uh, Valerians are allowed to marry brother and sister and nobody's going to get mad about it. But there's also this button here, which is the most devout. Now, this looks very, very similar, and I suspect it looks very, very similar because it is almost identical to something that was in the Crusader Kings 2 version of the mod, which was also very similar to a mechanic in Crusader Kings 2 um, for the papacy. But we're not going to look at that right now. But it's just to mention that is there, and that there's definitely signs that they're trying to put in some, like, pretty big mechanics from the previous versions of the mod. So, close that down. Uh, what else do we need to do that's base Crusader Kings before we can get started? We need to negotiate an alliance with our kinsman. Sure, our grandfather. That seems good. Um, he is currently uh, underneath us as a vassal, so this probably wouldn't have been an issue anyway, but we'll do that. Got two new things to look at at the Royal Court. I believe these are just banners that need to be put up. Nothing that we need to worry too much about. And then we get into something that's quite interesting. Stannis Baratheon, our brother, can marry. Now, I would think that what we want to do, given that we're, we're at war, is to marry him off for an alliance. Now, I'm not sure how alliances are going to work in this mod. And I say that because, actually, um, this mod does some interesting things with war. In my test uh, runs of this one, uh, when I was in battle, after a battle was won... What it would do is it would then say, Hey, um, I was impressed by your prowess in battle. I would like to join your side in the war. And you get people from the Iron Throne side then joining us. Which kind of makes sense in a rebellion, right? It's a swelling of forces as the rebellion game steam. And then eventually you make it to the, um, the king once you've got your full set of armies behind you. That sort of thing makes sense. But what... I'm not 100% sure about is whether that's the only way this can happen. I remember there being things in the Crusader Kings 2 version of the mod with alliances, and I suspect they could be similar here, as in, if we were, to, for instance, to get an alliance with the High Lordship of Old Town, would they be able to break free from the Iron Throne and join our side? I'm not 100% sure. Anyway, I'm going to sort by alliance power, and because it is Stannis, I'm going to go and look for somebody who's an adult, because that makes a lot more sense to me. We're just going to see if there's anybody available for him to marry. So, Golden Grove over here, potentially is someone he could marry. 
you could potentially marry Caitlin Bracken, who I think is already on our side, as the Riverlands are currently on our side. Golden Tooth is in the Westlands. We could potentially get somebody there. We have Harren Hall here. Our Harren Hall are currently not in the war. Okay, so we could potentially try and grab Harren Hall and get them into the war. This one seems like that would make a level of sense. Age-wise, it's even kind of right, which seems good. We could get a Shara Dane in here. So that's the High Lordship of the Tor of the Torrentine all the way down there. Ooh, a new trait. That's interesting. Okay. Uh, so we could try and grab them and get them in here. That'd be Lord Beric in there. Uh, we've got the Hardstone Hills. We've got the Blackwood Vale. We've got Macy's Hook. We've got Night Song. Um, I don't know. I don't know. We should probably just try a Golden Grove if our logic was to try and get somebody from underneath the Iron Throne in. But given I don't know if that works or not, maybe a more sensible thing would be to go for a guaranteed shot and get Harren Hall in here. Because they'll definitely be able to join. Currently, they're marked as independent. But I believe this is part of the Mega War system. Where they're independent. But actually, uh, when the war ends, they'll go underneath the Iron Throne anyway. Um, like, they're only independent while the war rages. So, let's try and drag them into our side of the war. Yeah, it seems like a good marriage. So, Stannis can marry Sarah Went. Let's see if that works. Right. And now we've got that out of the way, we're going to very briefly go into some menus and then we're going to unpause the game and we're going to get into this rebellion. So first menu we've got is here, there's a lot more in the council. Main differences are we have an admiral down here who can either reduce your embarkation costs and give you fleet movement speed or can give you domain taxes and supply capacity. And then we've got our Castellan up here who can do many, many things. And this button right here is... If you choose something like this, which can give you learning, you could then do this and then head back out. And then you could say, like, actually, no, I want stewardship. And then go, no, actually, I want overseeing realm and so on and so forth. And then there are other things underneath this list. What this basically means is you have a position on your council that can fulfill multiple different tasks and benefits from having multiple different high stats. Now, currently, it looks like learning would be a good thing to have him doing. Uh, given that that's what he does. However, we don't really need learning. What we probably need is either stewardship or diplomacy, uh, just because those will probably be more useful. Let's go for diplomacy, and we'll just leave him doing what he's doing for just now. Right. Um, only one I would even think about changing is Marshall, if we have an option. We can maybe put Lord Renly of Cape Wrath in here, because he's better at it. That probably seems not too bad. We're replacing Lord Brian of Night Song, but... I think that's okay. Yeah, let's do that. And that now gives us somebody better at Marshall in charge, which all seems good to me. Powerful Vassal expects a council position. Well, I mean, like, you know, that's his problem, really. Here, you can see we have court positions. These are all fairly similar to the ones in the base game. Sometimes different names. Sometimes, like the Maester, you've got multiple uh, positions put into one. So, Maester is effectively the court tutor and your court physician in one kind of package. And it looks a little bit different. But essentially, this is all similar to the base game. With Maesters, you can call for a new one from the Citadel if you don't have any. We currently have one, so we can't do that. There are a couple of new options in here, like being able to take a loan from the Iron Bank of Bravos. I don't think the loan is too useful currently, given that there are no mercenaries available, but, you know, it might be useful if we run out of money. You can also do these things just to disable certain things that the base game does and that the mod does, but there's nothing we need to worry about too much there either. So, I think we're pretty much ready to unpause. Now, we're going to follow exactly what the game wants us to do. We're going to go in here, we're going to take Gulltown bit by bit, and then we're going to see what happens. So, let's go in here, and I'm deliberately not raising any troops, and you will see why in a second. So we're going to march our way in here, and just start sieging. They were formed an alliance with Lord Edwin of the Estermont Hill uh, Isles, uh, which is good. We have now formed an alliance um, with Harrenhal. Wonderful. Does that say I can now call him in? It does say I can now call him in. So that seems very uh, sensible. We'll call him to war. Right, to keep raising our troops here. Lord Walter has joined us. Wonderful. 
So that means that we're only 15,000 troops uh, less than we need. Which is still not ideal, but, you know, there you have it. Is that the same betrothed can marry? Yes, we, we could marry her if, like, you know, that was an option. But she's currently being abducted, so it's not really an option. Right. What's in here? Oh, some random person has come to our court. I think I've found a reason why some days are more rat-free than others. My vassal happily declares as he moves aside to reveal a servant holding a very displeased cat. You know what? I'll take the cat. That's fine. What are we going to call the cat? Uh, we can call the cat... Um... He's going to be our... You know how we've got a maester? This is going to be our poster. There you go. He, he's our poster. It's not a great name. Names are not my strong point, but hey, you know what is a strong point? Actually naming it and moving on. Hey, our allies are joining us. There's Lord John, uh, Lord Paramount Ed John's host and Lord Paramount Eddard's host are all here. Now, you may notice a bunch of our stuff is under siege. That, I believe... Well, that's not where I expected it to be. Ah, it's down here this time. That is all of this land down here, so that's going to be the Reach and is Dorne. So it looks like independently they're they're in the war currently. Ah, well that makes sense. So the Principality of Dorne and the Reach are in the war. So this is part of the Mega War system. Okay, so Mega War system basically means these vassals are kind of partially autonomous would be the way I'd describe it. As in, Dorne can choose to be part of this war for, for um like for the Iron Throne, as can the Reach. When you're at peace, it works much as it normally does in Crusader Kings, but when you're at war, they can kind of be like, well, actually, no, I don't want to join your side, I want to join the rebel side, or whatever. They, they get their own choices for things that are going on, then that works down here. So Darkdale would get their own choice, Harbor Vane would get their own choice, and so on and so forth, in theory. I don't know how deep it goes currently, but that's kind of the logic of the system, and it means that you can have situations like the Game of Thrones books, where effectively vassals would join a cause rather than joining a specific like like rather than just being at war because of a title right they they join either um you know the targaryen side or robert's side they wouldn't necessarily be like well because my liege joined it i'm gonna join it right that's kind of the logic anyway i believe have we won our siege we have won our siege well let's head right into gull town and keep sieging two months left are we leading? We are. That's fine. Now we just chill here for a little bit as we siege this down, and then we will get into the war proper once this siege finishes. So, the siege finishes. To the defense of the Stormlands, alongside John Arryn, we have accomplished a significant victory, the first of this rebellion. After the successful siege, we have managed to capture Gulltown, the strategic city blocking my path to sail back to the Stormlands. With Gulltown now under our control, it is time to set sail and rally the armies of the Stormlands to my cause. The winds are favourable, and the ships are ready to set sail. So, to Storm's End. And this is why I didn't raise any troops, because if we scroll all the way down to Storm's End, you'll see that our troops are now down here, and now we can raise our troops with the 5,000 that we had up in the north. So you can kind of see why I was holding off a second. Now down here, we kind of have two options. The first option is that we try and take over uh, this land held by John Connington. So Griffin's Roost. And this makes a level of sense. Take it because it's inside our realm. And then we can kind of move outwards from there. The other option is we take our troops and we just go and march directly over to these armies and try and beat them up. Or potentially we ignore all of this and we just march our way directly to the Iron Throne and see whether we can take it. There's a couple of different options. I think beating up their armies makes the most sense. But we'll see. We'll see. Right. First things first. Raise them all. Second thing. Let's have a look at our prisoners and see what we can do with them. So we have Gerald uh, Grafton. We can get five gold for him. Can I do anything else with them? Probably not. But I think it's worth just having a look. We can banish him. Uh, what does that do? Not not an awful lot for us. I mean that Lord Commander Jantos would join our court? Okay, I think this means that he would come and join us while he takes this person away. 
Okay, you make him a black a black brother. I understand. Okay. Uh, I think I'll ransom him for five gold. Gareth uh, Stone here, who is a bastard of uh, the Marston House. So, I that's why it's the stone name. Um, we could recruit this this person potentially. That would be okay. Gwyneth. Um, you can stay there for just now, and Luke, you can stay there for just now. Okay. We'll take able-bodied men for right now, and then we'll work out what we're doing with the, the children later. Right. Let's grab them. Merge up. We're leading an army. I definitely want to head down here and beat them up. The other problem, though, is that my allies are not here yet. They're still doing whatever our allies are doing, right? So they're probably going to be marching down this way. So maybe what we want to do is we want to go and meet up with our allies. So potentially getting this land first would be okay because it would allow us to stall out while we wait for our allies to get around. That would be okay. Yeah. So let's 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 head in here. See what happens. There's a chance they come and stop our sieges. So I'm just kind of trying to pay attention to both sides at once here. Deliberately not going at speed five because I'm kind of worried. Oh, there we go. There's our allies. They made their way here. They must have gotten boats. They arrived very quickly. Okay. So they're going to arrive and we're all going to start sieging things. This all seems good to me. Yeah, it's going rather successfully. Comparative to some of my attempts. Some of my attempts were dead by now. A courtier between friends. My friend, Lord Paramount Eddard, has honoured me for a visit and has brought one of his courtiers along. Eddard approaches me excitedly. It pleases me to see you thriving here in Storm's End. It has occurred to me that Lewin here might be of service in your court. I mean, he's really, really good at learning. He is, however, a maester. I don't really I don't really want a maester currently. We have a maester. I, I think you can probably keep Maester Lewin. Um, sorry, Eddard. I mean, I know you, you were really excited to give me this maester that you didn't want, but, you know, I don't want him. An inappropriate exchange. My ward, Justin, seems to enjoy our latest feast immensely. Afterwards, he uh, couldn't stop talking about the feelings that locking eyes with one of the younger servants had caused in him. Um, okay, I guess, Justin Macy, you're going to be lustful? Okay, sure. Seems fine. Continue our siege. I'm still worried about these troops over here, which is why I'm going slowly. Oh, we're ill. Oh, well, that's not good. We're going to tell our uh, maester not to do anything crazy. He made me worse. Maybe I should have got rid of our maester. You just say the traitor deserves to die. You know, I think I just tell him to go away. What would be perfect right now is if we die. I think that would just make everything a bit weird. So Prince Doran is taking some land over here, which is what we're expecting. Okay, continue our siege. We've got 20 days left. And have we taken it? We have. Nice. Okay. Continue working our way along here. The other one's up there. We'll go and help out with the siege. May want to reinforce our troops slightly, but that's okay. Right, so we've now taken all of that one. How much can we have? We can have about 10,000 on a couple of these ones. 5,000. Yeah, so let's split up our army slightly here. Uh, I kind of want to split up these 7,000s as well. So, how much is it, is it I can have on the 5,000s? Ah, uh, not really any. Okay. So, I want to split up our 5,000 man armies even further. Alright, and then all of these armies are going to go find somewhere to live. That's fine. Just split them up and move them around. Uh, just purely looking to regain some supply here. Uh, that'll be fine. Right, let's go with this. Spread out, regain supply. Some of these are losing supply, why? Um, there's 22,000 currently trying to get supply off of this one. Well, that would do it. Let's wait a second. Yeah, some of them actually have supply there, that's fine. Uh, there appear to be less troops, like, immediately there. I think we might have an opportunity to win some battles. We lost Night Song. Where's Night Song? Uh, oh. Yeah, Siege of Night Song lost. 
is all the way down there. Okay, I think we might try and beat up these Dornish armies. Seems like a good idea. Now we've got a little supply back. I'm not going to spend too long on gaining supply because I want to keep up some momentum, but let's do that. Let's march our way down here and let's see whether our allies do appear to be joining us. Wonderful. And we're now attacking in. It's us versus Barristan the Bold. Well, that's, uh, that's a worry. Okay. It's still us versus uh, Sir Barristan. Battle of Steep March. Okay, so this is what I was talking about. During my clash with the Targaryen loyalists at the Battle of Steep March, um, Lord Glendon has come before me to offer me his submission. Clearly, after seeing my skill at arms and my munificent treatment of the other former loyalists, he has realized that it was much wiser to side for a righteous cause. So that now means that Rootvane, wherever they are, so up here, Rootvane, they're now going to be on our side. You look at that, so they're now on our side completely, which gives us a ton of extra land. Cool. And then, ooh. The air feels brisk and invigorating this morning as I look across the ba horizon and see that haughty dragon bastard's tent billowing in the wind, smoke blowing across the lands between our two camps where the battle will soon ensue. I know it in my heart that I'll track the proud prince down in the midst of the clamber and drive my hammer into his skull. It's all been building to this. Every battle, every skirmish, every dead knight has brought us to this point. It's time to make Rhaegar bleed. Justice will be done at last. Before we do that, though, uh, Lord Harris has come to our side. Harris of Grandview. Grandview being here. So that is going to be end up being ours as well. So we'll say the stag grows stronger. Wonderful. So we're now much, much stronger. And we're in single combat with Prince Rhaegar Targaryen. Well, this is quick. We are a better fighter. So let's see what we're going to do. Um, maybe we'll try and intimidate him. Commanding the rabble in battle is an exercise in shouting and intimidation, and I demonstrate this to Rhaegar by screaming foulness at the top of my considerable lungs. In a bid to humiliate me, Rhaegar simply backs away whenever I get close, insulting me in detailed depth, well aware that I can't ignore him. So we've decided, both decided to just shout and uh, insult each other. My form is deteriorating fast with numeral exploitable gaps, and Rhaegar's stance is failing. My opponent is still holding up my blow as well, but he seems close to faltering. So, uh, let's see. Let's go for a medium low. I'll show you how I heft a sword. Oh, wow. Confidence is half of any fight, and I throw out fluidly quick slashes with all the confidence of a seasoned expert. When I judge the time to be right, I switch up the pattern of surprise sideswipe that takes Rhaegar right in the belly. The strike hurls my foe backwards, something red and vital, looking sliding limply out of a new hole as he topples to the ground. I approach with some caution, but it soon becomes clear that, uh, that shock is setting in. Taking a moment to kick away his sword just in case, I prepare to put Rhaegar out of his misery. Goodbye, Rhaegar. Well... That was quick. Um, so that would be Rhaegar Targaryen now dead. Okay. Back to our battle against Barris and Selmy. Okay, we just had a death. Our knight, Donald Noy, was killed. Uh, but we also maimed Alistair Thorne. Okay. Bunch of knights injuring other knights in the battle. An ally joined our war. Lord Paramount Quellen of the Iron Isles has joined our war. Oh, on our side. Well, that's that's really quite useful. It's an extra 20,000 troops. Our counsellor, uh, Selwyn, died. I've lost where the battle is. Okay. But it looks like we're going to win this battle. We're losing a lot of tr uh, people on each side. But the battle, I believe, is now won. Hey, additional taxes. Very useful. And then... Have we won it? First battle of the war? Proper battle of the war? We have won it. We lost another allied uh, combatant there at the end as well. Vassals have been imprisoned. So Lord John imprisoned some people. And now we need a new chancellor. New chancellor is going to be... 
Could be one of these guys. Is anyone else good at this? Not you. Uh, don't really want to put in somebody who doesn't like us as that as a um, yeah as a spy master. You're not good at diplomacy either. Okay, I guess I'm going to put in Lord Lucas as our chancellor for right this second. Lucas fell, and then we'll clear out that list. Carry on with the war. Okay. Um. We know, oh, right, we have a couple of armies here. I forgot, because we have more armies because we gained them during the battle. Okay. Well, that's a great start, I gotta say. 28% there. We could march our way over here and take the siege back and then start attacking the Reach's army. I think that seems like a sensible plan to me. Let's do it. Three months left. On this siege, let's go speed four. Speed it up a little bit. Okay, maybe speed five here just for a little bit. Ooh, offer knight tutelage. I would like for your knight, Gareth Marston, to become a squire of Walter Hutchison, a most skillful knight. Sure. And Poster has charmed a uh, vassal. Nice. We've taken this. Do we want to march our way up to the Reach? I think I do. I think I do. Let's see if we can get up there before they leave. They're completely leaving. Oh, are they attacking the Iron Isles? Oh, we want to try and help them out. Uh, actually, we want to stop here and wet, let them come to us, I think, if they're going to. Nope. Okay, follow them along. Maybe go in here. Attack. It's very uncertain about who's going to win, as am I. So let's find out. 24 versus 17 is not a bad start. Oh, somebody's joined us. Lord John has joined us. John of Wentway. So Wentway, is that de jure part of... Oh, so that's also de jure part of the Stormland. So this might all be events from um, from us playing as Robert. These might not be events from the, me uh, from the Mega War mechanics. But still, cool. He has joined us. That's definitely a good start. More people are joining us. It's 85,000 on our side versus 42 on theirs. 80, it's 96,000 versus 42,000. 91,000 versus 71,000. That's too many troops on each side. Okay. I think we're going to win, but my god, a lot of people are going to die in this battle. On both sides. Okay. So that was that battle. That was worth a lot of war. That maxed out a war score. At some reason, it's 78%. <laughs> it's kind of odd. That kind of looks like our battle war score is not max. Like, it doesn't have a cap to me unless it caps literally at 78, which seems a bit unlikely, personally. Uh, our counselor, Renly of Cape Wrath, died in a duel uh, to Oberon the Red Viper of Dorne. Oh, okay. Cool. Uh, we need a new marshal. That can be Lord Harris for right this second. Uh, you know what? We don't really need somebody to increase the size of our armies or lower army maintenance. Uh, I think actually train commanders or manage royal guard makes a lot more sense. Maybe you'll train commanders for just now. Um, now we need to figure out where to go next. Maybe head up towards the Iron Throne now. Kind of seems like the right time, doesn't it? Right. March our way north. Is this the big war? Yeah, so this is... 98 versus 85,000. We lost 11,000. They lost 30,000 troops in that one battle. It's crazy. We actually have more troops than them by a significant margin now. Oh, wait. Wait here a second. There we go. I can merge up those two armies. Now we'll march away north again. Just head directly into this one. Start sieging. Bit of siege four. Speed four. Oh, okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. What happened? Damn your seventh grandfather. You are much greater fool than I imagined. In order to put an end to this bloodshed, I will comply with your demands. So this is King Viserys III. So what happened to you? He was executed on Lord Jamie of the Westlands' orders. 
Oh. Okay. To be king or not to be king? I've emerged victorious after my war of the murderous Targaryen dynasty. Forces loyal to me want to make me king. They say my claim would come from Princess um, Riel of the Iron Throne, my grandmother. But I have to ask myself, do I truly want to be king? Looks like Lord Paramount Tywin of the Westlands and Lord Paramount Tywin of the Westlands okay, are far more suited to ruling the realm, I think. No one will contest my choice to make either of these great men king, should I choose. Hmm. Should I make myself or King Tywin of the uh, Westlands? Um, I believe we are going to become the king of the Iron Throne. So that gets us the Seven Kingdoms of the Iron Throne and its vassals. You also get the High Lordship of King's Landing and its vassals. And the Lordship of King's Landing and its vassals. Yes. We'll take all that. We are now a mighty king. As I have now ascended to the Iron Throne, I must decide who will rule the Lord Paramountcy of the Stormlands in my stead. There are my brother Stannis and Renly. I can also rely on my Estamont relatives. Um... I will choose a member of my family. Well, I it was Renly who was given it, wasn't it? it? Was Renly who was given it in the main one? Now I'm like, can I even remember what happened? I believe it was Renly who was given this. While Stannis was given uh, something he didn't want. Could be wrong. You see, it's, it's been a while since I, <laughs> I last uh, went into this. Um... You know what? In our world, in our world, Stannis was given it. He's given the Lord Paramountcy of the Stormlands. He has the High Lordship of Sip Shipbreaker Bay and its vassals. Yeah, he's the natural choice. So we now... Whoa, 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 whoa. So we now have Lord Paramount Stannis here. Uh, who is um, married to Sarah Wentz, of course. The War's Aftermath. At long last, we've achieved victory in the face of those who sought to rebel against me and disrupt my righteous rule. Now that the traitors are within my grasp, the time has come to choose what fate shall befall them, whether to show them mercy or to punish them for their transgressions. Okay, so bring them before me. Oh, wow. We got a whole thing here. Okay. Uh, I now have a Grand Maester. Pycelle. Good. It is now up to me to lead the vast kingdom of... Of the vast seven kingdoms, my prisoner Viserys left behind. I stand before my vassals, adjust my new crown, and laugh gently. All well, the things I will accomplish. Okay. So, the war's aftermath. Lord Paramount Stannis kneels before me, ready to receive my judgment for his treachery. What, what, what treachery? Did Stannis... Was he, was he traitorous? Okay. There are many options before me as to what punishment he should receive. Some mild, some severe. Which to choose will depend on how severe his treachery against the throne was. You're not even in my... Pri no, I think... I think I think Stannis is good. Yeah, I, th I don't think he needs any... Yeah, my will be done. Who are you? Roger. Roger kneels before me. Um... Roger of Willowwood. What what is the Willowwood? The Willowwood is up here. I don't really know what Roger did either, if I'm honest with you. He was in the Riverlands. Oh, okay. Uh can I see what happened with uh Roger? You became friends with George Weller. You lost the Battle of Marstone against Lord Paramount Hoster of the Riverlands. I knighted Oh, no, he knighted Emmond and then was imprisoned by me. Well, you were against me. Maybe I am maybe I just show leniency? Wait, did I ask? No, I didn't break it. Okay, resume court event. Um, what's Misk? I can select a hostage. I'm going to take Danwell as a hostage. Yeah. Um, or I can give... Wait, I can just make Lord Paramount uh, hostage decide the, the thing. Yeah, decide his punishment. That's fine. Who's Lord John? Lord John of Nestridge. Stannis will decide his punishment. Prince Doran. Ooh. So Dorn. 
You know, for Dorn, I think what we do is we select a hostage. We're gonna we're gonna take his heir, Princess Ariane of Dorn, as a hostage. My uh, will be done. Jeremy, Hoster can deal with you. Maidenpool, Hoster. Mace of the Reach. We're going to do the same as we did to Dorne. We're going to take their heir, which will be uh, Lord Willis. We're going to take him uh, as a hostage. Lyman, Hoster will deal with you. Mark of Daltown, uh, of uh, Goldtown, uh, John will deal with you. Perfect. Right. We have cleared out our courts. Going to let time move forward slowly. Hey, I'm no longer ill. Well, that's good. I forgot I was ill. We've inherited the crown of Aegon I. Uh, he disappeared without a trace. Usually means he's murdered. I think in this case it does literally mean he's been, he disappeared without a trace. trace. We got a ton of different crowns. We got some armor to um, wear. Let's go speed four. And look at that. The Iron Throne is all together. Minus Harren Hall, which is notably not together. Do you want to be my vassal? Okay. Now including Harren Hall. We've got a couple of these little places that are no longer um, my vassal, which we'll have to bring back in. But essentially, that is the end of our first war. We're now the king of the Iron Throne, and next time we have to figure out exactly what we're going to do while ruling this kingdom, and probably get into some of the mechanics that we simply didn't get a chance to look at today. So, thank you for watching. As it's the first episode of a series, and I only do it in the first episode, I would like it if you'd like, comment, subscribe, do anything that you really feel like doing to the video, because on the first video it really helps with search ranking and SEO, and it helps the video get out to more people and helps the channel grow, and generally is just a good thing for me. So, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next episode. Goodbye.